taken care of. Oh! Gracie, what are you doing? Well, um, B and I were, were, were in the house and we're looking for the bottle warmer that Mrs. Renfield gave Nola and she thought it was here, so they're looking for it now. Uh, Fritz, why don't you go into the kitchen and see if you can help them find Kelly Louise's yes. things? Look at this. What's this, Grace? That's Nola's copy of Weathering Heights, and it meant a lot to her. She would have never left here without that book. Uh, what's so special about a book? Well, Mr. McCord gave this book to her Christmas time, and, and don't you remember giving her Weathering Heights? Uh, Weathering Heights, Miss Middleton? It may have meant something to her then, but not now. When she left here, she was so hurt and angry, I doubt very much if she would uh, take anything that would uh, remind her of me. No, no, that's not true. That book meant a lot to her. I know it. And if the book is still here, it means that Nola didn't mean to leave. And I think we should call Lieutenant Wyatt uh, right uh, away. Gracie, I think that Nola was just upset and in a hurry, and she forgot the book. That's all. No, no, I'm telling you, I know Nola. She wouldn't have oh, left her Tony, right. Tony, I'm so glad you're here. Mrs. Renfield and I looked all over the kitchen, and all the babies things are gone. Nola must have taken all of Kelly Louise's things. Everything. Why is it a surprise, Mom? That's just what she said she was going to do. She said she was going to take the baby's things and not the baby. Where is your head, Tony? I want you to call Lieutenant Wyatt right now and tell him all about this. You might like some sherry. No, thank you. What were you thinking of just now when I walked into the room? I was thinking about Nola. I was thinking about how much I miss her. And how we sometimes take for granted those things that mean so much to us and never realize it till we lose them. I'm sure that if you... Well, I hope that isn't Helen. She's been out of the house all evening. She's probably with that terrible Loomis person. Anthony would have told me if she were. I still don't trust her. Mr. McCourt, residence. Just one moment, please. It's Silas Crocker. You're lucky you were there to take my call this time, Quentin. If you hadn't been, it would have been all over for Nola. Yes, well, I'm here, and I'm listening. Are you? Come on, damn it! Tell me what you want me to do! Oh, it appears our Mr. McCord's a bit nervous, doesn't it? Just what are you on the edge, Quentin? Would you just tell me what you want, damn it? Just listen then, and you listen closely. Because I'm going to say this just once. You know, his life depends on your getting every little detail. Go ahead, Silas. I'm listening. Good. Now, I want you to stay exactly where you are. I'm going to contact someone who will be working with me, and when my associate and I work out our plan, we'll call you back. And then you'll be ready to move into action without any hesitation or delays. Yes, yes. Is that all you're going to say to me? You just shut up and listen to me. I want you to keep your phone line free at all times. Oh, and I sincerely hope that you aren't foolish enough to try to take any independent action, such as trying to find out where I am or involving the police in any of this. You know me better than that, Silas. <laughs> yes, I guess I do. All right, Quint, that's it for now. No. No, that's not it for now. 
I have a demand of my own. I'm not interested in your demands. You just listen to me, Crocker, because I won't take one step until I have proof that Nola is all right. You know, you're accustomed to giving orders, Quentin, but it's my turn now. No, Crocker, no, it isn't, because I won't take one step, I won't make one move, you'll get nothing until I know that Nola is alive and well. You're making a mistake, Quentin. Those are my terms, Crocker. A bloody big mistake. You take them or leave them. But knowing how greedy you are and how much you want to get your hands on that cradle, I think you'll take them. Silas? Crocker! Damn it. What did he say? He hung up. No, it's, it's okay. I hope I haven't made a mistake because Silas is a madman. Could very easily take his anger out on Nola. Mr. McCord, you did the right thing. You had to ask for proof that Nola was okay. Oh, I pray it's so, Anthony. Because if I've made a mistake, if I've miscalculated, Nola's the one who's going to pay for it. Paulie, it's more important than ever now. You get to watch Loomis and call me the minute he moves to do anything, okay? You got the number here, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, babe, I owe you one. See ya. Well? He says Loomis been on the phone for the past half hour, just went back up to his room a few minutes ago. Well, that means he was talking to Crocker. And they were going over the plan, which means Crocker's gonna call us here That's any minute. That's what I figured. That's why I got off the phone. Listen, he said something else. Every call that Loomis has gotten has come from a payphone somewhere. That means that Crocker has to call Loomis. Loomis can't call Crocker. And that means that we... Hello, Quentin, dear. Tony. Helena. Why didn't you join me for dinner? I had to eat in that huge dining room all by myself tonight. We had important things on our minds, Helena, which meant we weren't particularly hungry. Oh, Quentin, you look absolutely terrible. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry to have to be so blunt, but you do. You simply have to get some rest. Or at least let me in on your plan so I could help you. After all, I know Silas and Jamie much better than either one of you. Which is exactly why we won't tell you anything. What in this world do I have to do to let you know that you can trust me? After all, it was I who made that first appointment with Jamie at the risk of my own life. I don't want you following me. Wherever I go, you're, you're right behind me. I open my bedroom door and there's Fritz lurking in the corner. It's driving me crazy. As long as you're in this house, Helena, you are going to be watched. Now, why don't you go up to your room and stay there? Quinton. Please don't ask me to go to my room like a small child. Mrs. Renfield, would you be so kind as to escort Miss Manzini up to her room and make sure that she stays put? I will not be locked away in that room with no phone cut off from everything else! Mrs. Renfield, would you take Miss Manzini up to her room and make sure that she stays there? Anthony, lock those doors. Hello. Silas, you probably thought I wasn't home. My God, what have I done? <laughs> 